my classmates would go home at Christmas vacation and, and they would come back with these amazing stories of parties and orgies and the women and so on. And so, this is a boys' school, so there are all kinds of crazy stories, you know. And I spent Christmas vacation throwing a basketball at the gym. And so I always wanted to have what I thought they had. So I went to business school. When I graduated from business school, I was recruited by a, a big consulting firm that I was flying first class around the world. I was staying in the best hotels. I was having dinner with presidents and beautiful women. Before I got the job, I was interviewed on a lie detector for two days, and they knew <laughs> that, that what I wanted was money, power, and sex. And my job <clears throat> was really what we call that of an economic hitman. Go to countries that had resources our corporations want, like oil or gas, and arrange huge loans to that country from the World Bank, and that the money had to be used to pay our corporations, U.S. corporations, to build infrastructure projects in those countries. But the money never actually went to the country. At the beginning, I thought what I was doing was the right thing because I'd been taught in business school and the economic models show that if you invest in infrastructure, power plants, highways, the economy grows. And it does, statistically. But the money went to our own corporations to, who made big profits. And then in the end, the country couldn't pay off the debt. And so we'd go back and say, hey, since you can't pay your debt, sell your oil, gas, whatever resource, cheap to our corporations without any environmental or social regulations, or let us build a military base in your country. Things like that really became an empire. And in a few cases where the leaders of the country wouldn't accept the deals that I was offering, people we called jackals went in. And these are people that either overthrew or governments or assassinated their leaders. First class airplanes, best hotels, best restaurants, lots of women and presidents and so on and so forth. And I was really unhappy. It was very difficult for me to get out because I was getting what I thought, what I'd been, what I'd thought was everything I wanted. One moment I had this incredible moment when I just realized that even though I was living what seemed to be the ideal life, I was taking a lot of Valium. I was drinking a lot of alcohol. I was going through psychoanalysis. I was miserable. I stayed in that job for 10 years, and then I began to really understand how bad it was. So I think I had to go down deep into the dark side in order to come up into, let's call it the light, when, where I saw how bad the system was. And now I can you know, devote my life to trying to change it. I started to write a book to expose this system. We call it an expose, where I would interview lots of other people who had jobs like mine, and the jackals. And very soon I got a phone call, or several phone calls, anonymous voices threatening my life and my daughter's life. And I was scared because I knew these people could do that. And then soon after that, I got invited out to dinner by the president of Stone and Webster Engineering Corporation, which was one of the biggest consulting firms in the world in those days. And he says, John, you have a very good resume. You were chief economist of one of our major rivals. We would like to use your resume in proposals. Uh, you don't have to do any work. And I'm prepared to write you a check uh, tomorrow for $500,000. And then he looks at me and he says, just don't write that book. So I'm being threatened and I'm being offered a bribe. My daughter's being threatened, her life, and I'm being offered a lot of money. What would you do? What would you do? I took the money. And on 9-11, I'm in the Amazon with a group of people when 9-11 happened in New York. What I knew was that the system that I had been part of was somehow responsible in some way. I knew I had to write the book. I had to expose the system that was going on in the world. So, but this time I decided that I wouldn't tell anyone I was writing the book. You just write the book and get it out there. Once it's out there, if they do something to you, book sells. First of all, the book was rejected by 39 publishers. All the big publishing houses said no, and it was because they were afraid of it. 
And then one small house in San Francisco, Barrett Kohler, published the book. And immediately it went to the New York Times bestseller list very quickly. It stayed there for a year and a half. That all over the world, people get trapped in this system, this corporate system. And so we live in a very, very exciting time when people around the world are waking up to the fact that we must change it. That's my job, is to help do that. But every one of us needs to be involved at some level. So it really is going to take us all to make that happen because the people at the top don't make change. I'd like to be remembered as, as someone who, who really cared and really tried to make a difference and enjoyed doing it. <laughs> 